Hello there. Andor episode 4 just dropped and wow, I personally really enjoyed the episode and would love to know what you guys think in the comments. Let's get into it. We start where we left off, with Andor and Luthen escaping Ferex on his ship. The ship jumps to hyperspace and tell me that the cockpit doesn't look like the Millennium Falcon. Andor is surprised how the Fonda Hallcraft could do that with that much power. He begins to think there is more to Luthen than meets the eye. We see that Cassian actually got tagged in their recent fight on Ferex, but only just scraped the side of his arm, but large enough to cause a lot of bleeding. The two then talk about the up and coming mission. Cassian making it known that he hasn't agreed to anything and asks about Aldani, where they're going. Lucen gives Cassian three options, get dropped off, join him with something important, or kill him and steal his ship, something he probably couldn't do in his condition. He offers him the chance to steal something of real value to hit the empire where it hurts. He plays on Andor's past, trying to pry at the reason he does what he does. He attempts to ignite his deep and strong hatred for the empire and is somewhat successful. Andor now knows that he's part of some sort of alliance fighting against the Empire. He is initially skeptical about his cause and tells him it's better to live and do what you want. It is revealed that Andor was fighting when he was 16 and we know that this was in the Clone Wars. Interestingly enough, he was actually fighting on the Separatist side against the Clone Army. He explains how it was all for nothing though, how they're actually fighting each other in the end. Of course this refers to Palpatine having control of both sides of the war. I doubt Andor knows the details, but it wouldn't be so hard to put the dots together when the Empire emerged right after the end of the Clone War. Luthen reveals he knows more about Andor than Andor thought he did. How he didn't actually fight, but was a cook and ran away when he had the chance, the only reason he survived. And this is the reason that he does this now. He finishes by telling him that he didn't actually come for the Star Pass, but actually came for him. He offers Andor 200,000 credits for the job of stealing the quarterly payroll for an entire Imperial sector. The overall take from this interaction is Luthen offering Andor to do something more with his life than just scraping by. We now head to Coruscant, the capital of the galaxy. Man was I excited to see this. We head to the Imperial Security Bureau, following Dedra Mero inside. It seems everyone inside, around the table, is in charge of a number of sectors, maintaining order in those sectors and reducing conflict. They are a law enforcement agency and central intelligence for the entire empire. Partagaz, sitting at the head of the table, is in charge. The bureau is somewhat covert. It was initially formed by Emperor Palpatine to root out the enemies of the New Order and Galactic Empire. Partagaz puts it nicely. They locate germs whether they arise from within or have come from the outside. He is basically saying their job is to find traitors and rebels of the Empire, whether they work for the Empire or not, and stomp them out like a disease. There is a little Rogue One easter egg here. They mention an increase in the construction shipments sent to Scarif, the planet where the Rogue One movie ends and where the Death Star plans were stolen, resulting in Andor's you know what. They then discuss the Morlana sector, where the incident occurred in Episode 3. This is where the conflict in the Imperial Security Bureau begins to form. Levin is in charge of the Morlana sector, which includes Ferex, and he has jurisdiction over the matter. However, the stolen Starpath unit was recovered. This unit was lost by Dead Ramiro on Stairguard, and she intends to get it back. She believes she also has jurisdiction over the matter on Ferex, and asks her inferior to get everything they have from Levin's office. However, Blevin ignores her request, and then her own. The issue of their jurisdiction then goes to Partagaz. Andor chooses a cover name, Clem. Now not many people noticed this, but Clem was actually the name of his adopted father whom we saw in the previous episode. As collateral, he offers Andor his necklace. He describes it as a Kuati signet, blue skyber, sky stone, the ancient world, celebrating the uprising against the Rakatan invaders. Let's break this down. The kyber crystal is what gives a lightsaber its power. Force users would find them on planets like Jeddah to Ilium. Jedi apprentices would search for this in their training and try and connect with them with the Force. Now I think this will all be paid out before the end of the series, the origin and backstory of the crystal, but there is a chance that Luthen was once a Jedi. We then go to Aldani, where Luthen meets with Val and convinces her to take Andor with her and that he will be a valuable asset. Val isn't very keen initially on the idea and doesn't think her team will accept someone three days out of their mission, especially after five months of planning. She's at odds with Luthen because her team has been fighting hard for this rebellion and Clem is just a mercenary to her, but Luthen convinces her that they need him. When they go back to the Morlana sector, 
where the corporate security has now been disbanded and the system is now under full Imperial control. The three officers are sacked after their recent failure. Andor tries to get information about Luthen from Val, but is unsuccessful. She warns him not to mention his name at their camp, and I'm curious why. I wonder if we'll see this play out in the future. She then reveals to Andor some details about their mission. They're robbing the armory at the Aldane garrison, an area obviously highly defended. This doesn't sit well with Andor. He isn't so keen on fighting an Imperial armory. We then get a great visual of them hiding from two TIE fighters flying above. Honestly, this was so loud in my headphones, I almost jumped. Now we see Luthen arriving on Coruscant. He gets changed into his secret identity. Honestly, I thought he looked just like Palpatine at first. Luthen is probably wanted by the Empire, so he needs to disguise who he really is. Okay, so as we cut to the scene, we are back with Andor, and they make their way to meet up with the other people on their team. It cuts to the first two members of the team. One of them was on lookout, but fell asleep. From their brief interaction, it shows that the guy who is guarding isn't very strong or military based, and his skill set will vary. In later conversation, his intellect is explored, but I'll talk about that later. They then see Val and Andor walking down the mountain in the distance. Now remember, to this group they have never met Andor, nor did they know anyone else was joining. They had been training for months for this mission, and now only 3 days before Val has changed it, which caused a spike in distrust between the group. Then the other group members become aware of Andor's appearance, and wonder who he is. To put it simply, they were not happy to see him at all. None of them were, especially the boy who was on lookout which further demonstrates his difference in ability and mindset compared to the others. In his mind, Andor is just an extra person who can help with the mission. But for everyone else, this is a stranger who could potentially compromise everyone and get them killed. Then we cut back to Coruscant after seeing the deputy chief walking to his mother's home. After losing everything, he has moved back in with his mother. I think we're going to see him rise throughout the show. Something is bound to happen with his character. After the first few episodes, he has hit rock bottom. I don't know where he will end up, but it will likely rise through the ranks of some imperial cooperation. As Andor is getting his wound healed from the last episode, Val and the team argue over his arrival. She efficiently explains that she trusts him and they need to believe in her. As we head back to Coruscant, we see Mon Mothma arriving at Luthen's home or shop. From the initial interaction between Luthen and his assistant, she seems to be aware of his position as a rebel, so was likely one herself. Luthen offers her a lot of artifacts he has stolen. As they walk over to talk about one, we can see some armor in the background. It looks like Mandalorian armor, even that of Jango Fett with the symbol in the middle. There wasn't much significance to it, but a nice easter egg for sure. The other easter eggs are a Gungan shield over at the back, as well as a dagger that looks similar to the dagger on Mortis, wielded by the father. Then they go to the back and drop their act of delightful dignity, and speak quickly in a low tone. So what's happened in this scene is that they are both acting like politicians, and are completely fake. As they go out back, they begin to discuss the rebellion. They are scared that Mon Mothma's driver has been sent to spy on them. This is a very important scene, as it outlines the struggle the rebellion is going through. They cannot speak openly in their homes, as the Empire places spies everywhere, especially among senators like Mon Mothma. On this particular day, Mon Mothma has a new driver which means these two have to act in a more discreet manner to keep their cover. This is a part of Star Wars that I really like. We've never got a show that has driven deep into the interworks of the Empire and life on Coruscant. Mon Mothma poses a new addition to their inner circle, but Luthen doesn't want to add anyone who could potentially blow their cover. I'm sure this person will end up being added. I don't know who it could be. They then leave the room and Mon Mothma leaves Luthen's place. As the scene changes back to Andor, the final member of the team arises and is furious with Val for including Andor this late in the mission, without ever mentioning it to him. We learn that this guy is actually part of the garrison, which pretty much means that they sneak into the Empire Station. He will be their man on the inside. Mon Mothma is shown returning to her home and is fighting with her husband about inviting guests over. From this interaction, it seems like he has no idea of her existence within the Rebellion, and thought of her wife as a senator. They are obviously rich and are upper class livers on Coruscant. This gives us a little more detail into Mon Mothma's character. She has everything she needs in life, and will never have to worry about money or anything, but she still risks her everyday life for the Rebellion. As we head back to Andor, they discuss their plan for invading the Imperial Station. They then have to infiltrate the base, and get into the vault underground. In this vault will likely be the payroll that they are stealing, essentially a lot of money. Then their plan is to escape out of the runaway tunnel. This is where Andor had issues with it. He claims they will have no chance of escaping because there are TIE fighters that will likely catch up to them in minutes and blast them to smithereens. Val explains that they will use the cover of a celestial event that occurs every three years. 
This will mask their escape and potentially stop the TIE fighters from following them. After everything was explained to Andor in detail, he seemed to agree with the plan and think it was possible. The only issue is they have to stick perfectly to the schedule in order to escape to have the celestial event to cover them. And finally, Andor is handed a device of some kind and is told to memorize the entire mission that night. That concluded the episode. So next episode, I would assume we see Andor and the crew invade the Imperial Station, which they will likely succeed but will have some troubles along the way, but it would be nice to see some action, especially some TIE Fighters. This episode was kind of slow, but it was still very good, and I am excited for where the show is going. What did you guys think of the episode? Please leave your thoughts on the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and may the Force be with you. Hey guys, don't forget to check out our membership program for only 99 cents a month which gives you these cool emojis to use in the comments as well as much more. Also, check out our Discord to hear about new video ideas first, link in the description.